This is Cake, and I'm doing some rough preliminary testing on the trial version of my mushroom farm. It's only about 10% of the way done, so it's working a little bit slow still. But I'm going to hopefully be able to show you guys some mushrooms dropping pretty quick. Okay. Lever is working right. If I don't accidentally knock it off. <laughs> Let's see if any mushrooms have dropped. No. Damn it. Alright. Hold on a sec. Alright, so here's the mechanism that I turned on with that lever. Um, the space near the mushrooms needs to update for them to pop out. I'm going to check and see what's wrong with it and hopefully I'll be able to show you guys what happened. Here they are. You can see one popped out there and landed on the square. Oh, duh! There we go! <laughs> I forgot to replace this water stream after I was messing around with it. Oh, my bad, guys. I'm sorry. So, yeah, this is working. Uh, I'm so tempted not to show you guys my fail. But, um, it's part of the process. I'm just going to start off by showing you guys how to build the middle um, cylinder since that's the most important and one of the easier parts to mess up. What you need to do is you need to pick a spot to be your bottom block. It needs to be a different block than the blocks around it. I'm using dirt but it doesn't really matter. Um, if you had all smooth stone underneath you could use cobble. We're going to need to dig af under this afterwards but it'll be easier this way to separate um, the spot we really don't want to dig under from the rest of them. Right, so we make a circle like that. That is step one in the cylinder making process. Now what we need to do is create variable lighting so the mushrooms can grow and then when the lights come on they can pop out. Because if the lights are always on they can't grow. If the lights are always off off they'll never pop out. So we need to put a bucket of lava in the middle of this. From there, just because it's easier to work with, I'm going to do the center pillar with dirt. And after that, all we need to do is grab some of our signs. And after I show you with this one, I'm going to run get more. And we put them on the sides here. And if we watch a minute, that'll actually cause flame to come up on this side. I need some more lava. And I need stuff for the signs. I'm going to pop those on and I'm going to show it to you and show the fire popping out once I finish the center pillar there. So hey, I noticed it was on fire and uh you need to be careful when you're on levels you've already finished or standing right next to them. <laughs> I'm back to building now. Actually, we're getting up pretty high now, even with that mishap. I thought I'd show you guys how I work in each individual level since I'm working on the last one now. This is actually... If you look down from here... There are three floor spots there. And there's one trough, there's fire, right there and right there. That was stupid. Um, <laughs> now there's a one wide trough around this, and this is three by three. And then you have the three square edge over there. That's how you have to dig it out. So everyone, this is our lovely completed lava tube that will be the center and one half of the mechanism that will pop out those uh, dull, boring mushrooms in this chamber. Let's go to the other chamber, which is mostly completed, 
where the red exciting mushrooms are being grown. Huzzah! This is not part of the design, but it is there to help show something off. This is my second take because I fell in the water like a dumbass. <laughs> Alright, so for mushrooms to grow, they need no light. For them to pop out, they need light. This variable lighting source inside of the uh, lava sign dirt cobble tube is what allows that to happen in this device. However, something just being lit, as in this square with the torch, will not cause mushrooms to pop out. A square needs to be lit and have its state checked. That's really technical. All it means is the square next to it has to have something in it change. Like a torch being removed. Now, what it checked for when I removed that torch is, is this lit? Which it was, because the torch is technically still there. And... Is there a mushroom in it? There was a mushroom in it, and it was lit. So it popped out. Now, another way to do this... And the only automatic way to do this is with redstone wiring. You'll see that mushroom's there, it's perfectly secure. What we need to do is change something about the square next to it. Redstone wiring sends an invisible charge through blocks. Redstone torches send invisible charge through every block touching them. So if we pop off this torch when it's on, that invisible charge will stop going to the square. And if you heard that little splash, that was our mushroom heading off on its voyage. Sometimes it'll get caught, but it's only about 30% of the time, and the fact that it's automated more than makes up for it. Alright, I'm gonna show you how this uh, redstone wiring works then. The bottom layer of this is relatively complicated, but I'm gonna try to simplify it as much as possible. The thing that matters is whether from a button or a lever, this is the in input and it needs to be charged. That's what that does. Once this is charged, this sends that invisible current I was talking about out into just the block in front of it, because it's a repeater. Now once that charge is in the block in front of it, it can spread out to blocks touching it. And I have one wall here that's sheared to save on space and time. But the basic premise of each wall is the same. From blocks come repeaters. Block wire, repeater. The wire repeater pattern is not the same all, on all walls. The thing is, there needs to be two solid blocks, three away, if you look, from the blocks that we have our mushrooms on. They need to have a current going through them. I prefer using a repeater for that, because it's less hard to screw up. And that redstone wiring there is actually just to gap this out so that that block will be where it needs to be so I can put a torch on the side of it. Because that torch is on the side of it, when current goes through this block, the torch turns off. And like I said, while the torch is on, it powers all the squares touching it, so it's powering all these. So the only thing you need to do to pop a mushroom out is have the light be over there and turn this from on to off, like I showed you earlier. Now, you need to do that from your starting point along this wall, past the two torches, on this wall, up to the second torch. And then you also need to have it along this wall and along that wall up to the second torch. But once you have that done, the torches are up, all you need to do is place one solid block above the torch, which means when the torch is on it will charge it, and a redstone torch on top of that. And just keep doing that all the way up. It doesn't matter if they start on or off, because the only thing that matters is that they change the block next to them. And that's the part of the mechanism that pops this out. Here's the repeater mechanism. 
this is laid out with minecart track. The exact layout here isn't important. In fact, I encourage you to mess with it to learn a little bit about minecart tracks and do figure out what works best for you. The only things it needs is a cart, put a chest in it, because that will stop, say, random creatures from wandering in and sitting in your cart and screwing it up. And, excuse me, I put cobble in there because I had too much cobble. And a torch that's off next to a booster track, and it has to be at one of the ends. You can't do it in the middle or it won't work, it won't know which way to boost the cart. Having that there tells it, okay, it can only go this way. Now when it, get act it gets activated, it zooms along this, it zooms around here, and you don't need to have this curve, you don't need to have these drops. That was just something I had so that it wouldn't hit the button going back and it would space it out a little more. You could technically even do just this booster, have it a button there, and then have it loop around and, and go back to the booster spot because the booster tracks will only go straight. So if a cart was to run into that from the side, it would hit it and stop. You can make it as simple as that. You can make it as complicated as this. Or you could go even bigger and longer and do multiple buttons and do whatever you want with it. All right, here I am building up that uh, the system like I said I was gonna. I just wanted to lead you through a ring or two of it and explain why I did things the way I did, so you can copy if you want. I'm not getting too fancy with this. You won't be able to see it once it's done. Though it does look really nice, and if you wanted to have it... Um, have it somewhere visible, and maybe even just run under it and send it to the collection system. You could make this look really cool because all you need is um, any block but glass in there. You could make that with anything you wanted. You'd need the signs in the lava, obviously, but you could make it look really awesome and lay this out and make that look cool too. This is just a functionality thing for me, though. So you need the ring to away from the fire. The reason it's not one away is because then mushrooms can grow into where the fire needs to burn, and fire needs a whole square to be able to burn when it's out in the wild affecting items. You can actually put um, a piece of wood and surround it completely with lava, and it'll stop it from starting on fire because fire needs a square. You can use almost anything except semi-transparent bo blocks like um, pressure plates or glass for this because those will stop the fire from starting. Okay, so I laid out this level. After I lay it out, I knock out some blocks. I only want the two blocks directly across from the fire and this block in the corner. The reason I want these these two and not the ones next to them is so the mushrooms can fall down easily. The reason I didn't knock this one out is because it makes it easier to lay the blocks in the first place. Once you put those two up, you don't place mushroom on them, you place mushrooms here, any square diagonally from them. You don't need to place them anywhere else. These are the ones that will grow onto here. They can grow up diagonally, they can grow up straight, they can grow down diagonally and they can grow down straight. The reason I'm not putting this flat against this is because if the mushroom popping out hits the back wall at an angle, it can slide in still sometimes. And because if two rows are trying to grow into one square, even though mushrooms grow slower diagonally up and down, two rows growing diagonally up and down in the same square will cause that square to spawn mushrooms faster. Right, so you jump onto one of these, you put this down, and we're going to do this the whole way up, level by level, being careful not to fall in.